this video, we present the Frame Stiffness Test Bench, also called Stiffness Test. This bench test makes it possible to determine the stiffness of a bicycle frame. This test is a basic requirement to get the approval for the use of a Gates carbon drive belt. The setup geometrically represents the use of a sprocket, with 50 teeth in the front and 22 teeth in the rear. The 100 centimeter long lever arm weighs 10 kilograms and for the test is loaded with 18 kilograms at its end position. This corresponds to a torque of 181.5 newton meters at the pedal crank. Or put another way, a cyclist weighing 106 kilograms stands on a 175 millimeter crank. The setup, measurement, and evaluation are described below. The threaded rod is inserted through the head tube of the frame. Then the frame is put on the bottom bracket mount. In the scope of supply are different bottom bracket mount adapters included, with the appropriate screws. After releasing the head tube slide, the threaded rod can be pushed further into the head tube until the cone lies flat. The dropout should be placed about 10 centimeters above the stiffness test. For fine tuning, the lower cone is used. To securely fix the frame, the upper cone is inserted and pulled tight. Then tighten the control tube slide firmly. To install the lever arm unit, the matching bearing pin is slipped on the inside. Now the lever arm can be put on and screwed to the bottom bracket mount. Sliding dropouts must be positioned at the rear stop point and tightened. The rear threaded rod is screwed into the rod end and tightened with a nut. By means of adapters, spacers, and cap screws can be configured for the frame suitable through axle. This is listed on the thread rod and inserted like an ordinary through axle. The deflection lever is secured with a nut. During installation, it is important to ensure that the milled surface is located at the rear right and is aligned vertically. Then tighten the axis. The deflection lever from the axis to the threaded rod must not have any play. Preparing the measurement. The dial gauge is inserted into the dial gauge slide and carefully tightened with the grub screw. In the first step, the measurement of the x-axis is presented. For this purpose, the dial gauge is positioned on a flat surface as close as possible to the axis. Then tighten the measuring slide and the dial gauge. The dial gauge may be slightly pretensioned. The dial gauge is then adjusted to zero. The documentation of the measured values is done by the given measuring protocol. At the beginning of the measurement, the weight of the three masses is entered. For the first measurement on the x-axis, a weight is placed on top and the lever arm is slowly lowered. The deformation of the frame in deflection of the x-axis is transferred to the dial gauge by the needle. When the needle stops, the value is read and transferred to the measurement report. This measurement on the x-axis is now repeated with a second and third weight. The measured values of the measurement with the second and third weight are also entered in the measuring protocol. For the measurement on the y-axis, the measuring slide is repositioned with the measuring needle on the plane surface of the axis. Especially on the y-axis, the dial gauge must be preloaded several revolutions. Then the measuring slide is tightened at the three points. Before starting the measurement, be sure to check that there are no collisions. After the dial indicator has been set to zero, the measurements on the y-axis can be started. The measurements on the y-axis are to be carried out the same way as the measurements on the x-axis, with up to three weights. Afterwards, the measured values of the y-axis are transferred to the measuring protocol. For higher accuracy, all measurements should be repeated twice. In the last step, the quotient is calculated. To calculate the quotient, the quotient of the total mass and the measured value is divided by 1,000 and entered in the measurement report. The tensile forces of the belt or chain lead during the pedaling movement to an elastic deformation of the bicycle frame in X and Y direction. If the frame is too soft and the deformation is too large, the gate's carbon drive cannot function without interference. With the help of the frame stiffness tester, every bicycle manufacturer is able to determine the stiffness of a frame. The frame stiffness tester is available at the UT GmbH. For more technical videos about the gate's carbon drive system, Subscribe to our channel. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. Your team from Universal Transmissions.